question to start with is positive disruption in terms of leadership. Let me ask you a question. What is the greatest miracle in the history of human species? Technological marvels, medical miracles. You might take a lot of time to guess that, but I have a candidate for you, and I bet you can't beat it. And I call that, I call that probe. P-R-O-B, I like acronyms. It stands for promise of and belief in equality. Never before in the history of our species has there ever been so many hoping for so much in so short a period of time. Just think about it. I was born in a generation wherein we kids stood in the summer heat and sang the birthday song for the king of Mysore. And here you are, kids here, you wouldn't know such a person existed. Probe, promise of and belief in equality is the greatest miracle and it has happened here for billions of us. Every presentation that has been done before now begs one question. These brilliant, dedicated people actually have created. They are leaders. Baba Jan is created by a gentleman here. Uh, Pratham and the organizations I have been connected with and have had the privilege to know, uh, Srikant and uh, Ravi, every one of them, as Sherlock Holmes said, the dog didn't bark. Each one of these ideas have been led by a, uh, by a leader and probe has now escalated the challenge of leadership, both in terms of quality and quantity to many, many times. Now, if that was all that was there, we would have said, you know, we can manage that. But no, this mother of all revolutions, this disruption of a monumental historic kind, which has happened in the last one second, if human species existed for 24 hours, we are in the last one second, and in the last one century this has happened. This has two children two foster children, two adopted children, two revolutions. And they are what I call the roar and soar. Roar is not mine. Sociologists in the 50s talked about revolution of rising expectation. What that meant was the following. When you are down at the bottom of the well and you have no hope whatsoever, you do not rebel. You just accept it as your lot. But give me a little bit. Give me a little ray of sunshine. Give me, allow me to climb the mountain a few hundred feet. Suddenly, I see the distant peaks. I see the horizon. I see the stars. And I say, what about me, please? When do I get there? We, the hundreds of millions of serfs, ordinary people who had their noses to the grindstone, who worked in the field, suddenly probe told us, you are equal, you know. You are no small teacher. You are equal to that, as Khrushchev said, me and the Tsar look the same in the bathtub. So these people, we said, let's look around. And when I looked around, what did I find? Shining city on the hill, as Ronald Reagan used to put it. There is this banquet hall, this castle, and there is a glass wall. And we go and press our noses to that wall, and we find inside these beautiful people who seem to look like us, but really, they have luxurious banquet out there, and me, I don't have anything. This is the greatest disruption in human history. Earlier, the kind of leaders we needed were feudal leaders. A few more people, by them, benevolent or otherwise, you manage the thing, but now it's not a few people. It's every human being, it's all our drivers and people out there in the hot sun who are not sitting here because they can't understand the language or they do not think they deserve. And yet, a friend of mine asked, how can this be the greatest miracle? Miracles should be manifested. No, 
perception is reality. We may never, just like love, truth, beauty, we may never realize ultimate equality, but the fact that it is now in the heads of millions and millions of us makes for the miracle, and therefore, and what is this sore business? Something I wanted to invent, and that is spiraling of reduced opportunities and dwindling expectations. In Western nations, increasingly, it is called the new leisure class, there are people who are not only unemployed, they do not want to be employed. American dream may not be dead, but it is convalescing and seriously thinking of going to Florida and retiring. There are societies where the shock of gray, the demographic changes are so vast that civilizations might go under. They may not survive because there wouldn't be enough youth. It would be like villages I saw in North Karnataka during a uh, lot of the years, wherein all young people are gone and old, only old remain. Soar is a completely contrary revolution to this one. Again, probe needs new kind of leaders, roar needs new kinds of leaders, soar needs new kinds of leaders, but none of these would be possible, would be so big, but for this. We all know this afternoon, if this is ever broadcast, all of us, the miracle of information revolution, Paul Revere, his horse would have been internet. He needn't have ridden through Boston all night saying, British are coming, British are coming. He could have sat in the cozy comfort of a New England home and just pressed a button and Twitter and British would, everyone in the world would have known British are coming. Tom Paine could have done that and Gandhiji could have just told a very smart aleck software guy, just hack into the empire uh, system, and instantaneously, British empire would be paralyzed. This, this neutral tool called information revolution, as it has been spoken about, it can be used for evil, it can be used for good, but it is, in spite of us, it is giving wings to these three and making them the most powerful spiritual tsunami that we as human beings have ever known. And therefore, does it go? Should I do this? Uh, I thought, my time is going. Okay, uh, no, ah, this we have seen. And now if you, this, I will skip this. These, these are words that military theorists came up with, but they are pretty good words to know why we need new kinds of leaders. What these revolutions are doing are making for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, all those words, whatever they mean to you in your head right now, that's good enough, and to that add interdependence. There is African Ubuntu philosophy, which talks about I are we, that we are inextricably connected to each other. What these four revolutions have done is that even if you wanted, you can't be separate from me. We are like a constant, eternal three-legged race that children play, wherein each one's leg is connected to the other. If we try to run fast by ourselves, we will fall flat on our face. Only way to run is to run with each other. Now, if so, the... It is there, and it is... Yes. Now, what is, the, what is the solution? I have spent 40 plus years as a student and a worker in organizations, working from shop floor to boardroom, and everywhere it has been leaders at various levels and followers, some of the most fantastic followers and some of the most fantastic leaders. And what have I found as the list of qualities that one could say, wow, if that is there, I will follow this person. And in order to have those qualities, the follower should already have it. As they said in Sanskrit, yatha praja tatha raja, not yatha raja tatha praja. As the citizen, so the king in democracy. Now, I feel that, you know, William White, uh, the philosopher once said, there are two kinds of people in the world those who divide people into two kinds and those who don't. What probe did was 
to convince us all that there are no two kinds of people. There's only one kind of people. There's only one race called human race. And if these four revolutions call forth, for there is a dire need for new kinds of leaders, then I believe that these are the qualities. This is the checklist that we have to have with every politician, every corporate leader. Incidentally, all of this is applicable to every major sector and particularly to politics and business. Business of business is not just business. Business of my family, my family is not just my family, but your family is my family. And those who have thought, as Milton Friedman did, that business of business is just business, are beginning to find out that only because I'm a cat who drinks milk, closing my eyes and thinking nobody else will see, it won't work. The environment will affect you regardless of the qualities, whatever one has seen, of the greatest of leaders, whether they are very famous, you know, Gandhiji, I too will quote Gandhiji over here, but Gandhiji or Mandela or Livingston or all the famous names, but there are many, many, many such that I have come across who are unknown to anybody except their system and have these qualities. At the base of it, integrity and character, our headlines are full all over the world of those who you say, oh my God, I don't want to invite that person to dinner to my home. And they rule over us. And in a lot of those cases, it is this that is lacking. Warren Buffett's statement saying that these are the three that are needed, but if somebody doesn't have this and has these two, please hope that he's very lazy and doesn't come to office because he will destroy you. This is what makes this whole thing moral, ethical, something that's good for humanity. Intensity, courage, I've never found a leader, never found in any way, with not a single exception, passion. Intensity is passion with purpose. And that passion, that intensity, that obsession with a cause is the fuel that comes in. Intelligence, intuition, this is not 160 IQ. The kind of intelligence that I have found is what I call amphibian intelligence. An ability to be many places at the same time. An ability like a frog to be in water and a bank. An ability to be at the abstract conceptualization one moment and at the concrete data here. An ability to connect disparate kind of people. To be at home on the shop floor with blue collar and at home with the board and uh, highfalutin people and be your own person. This, an intuition a thinker once said, all management theories, concepts, and models are no more than an aid to the intuition of the decision maker. And this, however a leader develops, has to be done. If these three foundations are there, then in this mantap, in this South Indian sanctum sanctorum, this sacred bandstand, there are five pillars that I have seen. And it starts with Gandhiji. He, one of his many uh, statements was, all my life ultimately is devoted to knowing myself better. Every religion has said, including in our own society, self-realization, self-awareness, a continuous process of understanding this mysterious person called me and empathy, I understand me, but I'm not living alone. You know, the worst punishment for anybody is solitary confinement and therefore empathy. But many amicable divorces are based on I understand you, you understand me, please, let's be separate. Interpersonal wisdom, a we that transcends the I and you and says there exists a we and it requires understanding, even forgiveness, interpersonal wisdom. But all of these put together is not enough. It is these two. A great leader, we need leaders who are the masters of the present, who can strategize, who can structure our organization in such a manner that probe these hungry mouths, these millions of us who are asking for a chance in the sun, 
these leaders ought to come up with strategies that today, not tomorrow, not next generation, but today, the 8.1 million children who don't even see school, we have in our organization taken over for 4,500 of these young children. There are so many more that these great people are working on. This is where such leaders are needed. And this is where strategy comes. But ultimately, the greatest of wisdom comes in a transcendent wisdom. Every great leader, whether of a family or of a nation, finally has this ability to transcend one's own system. It's not just my corporation, it's not just my city, it's not just my nation. I am a subset. Just as the earth is a tiny speck in the universe, I am a tiny speck in humanity. And every great leader I've seen has this ability. And in one minute, 52 seconds, I want to say, if you were to say, oh, please, this is all such, you know, this is, this is all very noble and profound and all that. Who is there? Have we come to such a state that such simple virtues, this is what my father was. This is what many of our, I live with people. I learned from people for whom these were not shibboleths. These were not unattainable virtues. These were merely necessities of a decent human being. And I have found this, these are not from textbooks and theories. These are from real life people who are practicing it, except that we have come to a stage where in the four revolutions, remember, probe has made it so much more difficult that we are all kind of, at, in a part of us, we are saying, I'll just work on my sandbox and please uh, somebody else deal with it. Like the drunk who looked for the key underneath the lamp and a man who was passing by said, did you lose your key there? He says, no, this is where the light is. Lastly, uh, a, an Italian joke that is quoted in this movie, Eat, Pray, Love, a man goes to a saint and says, every day prays, please, please, Father, let me, buy the, let me win the lottery. Then the saint comes to life and in frustrating tone says, please, 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 my son, please buy a ticket. We have to buy a ticket. 